In this video, we will state and prove the projection theorem on a convex set. Consider a finite dimensional closed non-empty convex set C in Rn and a point X that may or may not be in C. Then there exists a single point Y in C that minimizes the Euclidean distance between X and C, i.e. the norm 2 of X minus Y. This point is called the projection PC of X of X on C. Let's prove this theorem. First, consider any point Y0 in C and define C' prime to be the intersection between C and the ball centered around X and of radius X minus Y0. Importantly, C' prime is still non-empty and convex and the minimizer over C' prime will necessarily be the same as the minimizer over C. But now, C' prime is also bounded and thus compact. Since the Euclidean norm is continuous by Weierstrass theorem, we know that the minimization problem over C' prime has a minimizer y. All is left is to prove that it is unique. To get there first, we need a small lemma about Euclidean norm. We have u plus v squared equals to u squared plus v squared plus 2uv. Now, 2uv is also a factor that appears if we do u minus v. And in fact, if you want this to really appear, we need to write minus minus 2uv. And if we add u squared plus v squared on both sides, we obtain 2u squared plus 2v squared minus u squared plus v squared minus 2uv. This can then be rewritten as 2u squared plus 2v squared minus the distance square between u and v. So we have this equality that always holds for any two vectors in Euclidean space. Now let's get back to the proof of our projection theorem. We had a minimizer y. Let's assume that z is another minimizer. We now construct w, which is going to be y plus z divided by 2 in C'. prime. Intuitively, on a figure, you can see that w will necessarily be closer to x than y and z are. Moreover, because C' prime is convex, we know that W is still in C'. Prime. Thus, we see that W is strictly better than both Y and Z, unless, of course, Y and Z are actually the same point. And this is indeed what happens. Indeed, let's compute X minus W squared. This is equal to one half of X minus Y plus one half of X minus Z. Now we're going to apply the lemma we've just proved. And this gives us one half of x minus y squared plus one half of x minus z squared minus one fourth of y minus z squared. If y is different from z, then this will be strictly smaller than the minimal value x minus y squared, which is absurd. Thus, y is equal to z qet.